What's up everyone? In this video, we're going to be getting a user's posts and their account info with the Instagram Graph API using Python. We're going to be writing two scripts. The first script is going to be our business discovery script. This will get us the user's account info. Here we got the username, their website, the number of posts they've made, the followers they have, the people they're following, the profile picture URL, and their biography. The next function is the get users media function. When we run our get user media script, we get back the post that the user has made. Instagram returns pages, so we have to keep requesting multiple pages if there is multiple pages. The first page here, we display each post, and for each post, we display the link to the post, the post caption, we can know what type of media it is, and we know when it was posted at. Scrolling down a bit farther, we will come to page two, and we do the same for page two. For this video, I will be picking up right where we left off in our last video. In our last video, we were able to get the user's Instagram account ID and their page ID. In the video before that, we got the access token. So if you didn't check out those videos, go check them out and then come back here. Because now we have the access token, the page ID, and the Instagram account ID. The three things that we need in order to start making calls and getting real data back just like this. I'm going to hop over to my Python folder and I'm going to create a business discovery file and I'm going to create a get user media file. The business discovery is getting the user's account information and the get user media file is getting the post that the user has made. Then I'm going to open up my get user media, my business discovery and the defines file from my Python folder in Sublime Text. I'm gonna start with the business discovery file. This is where we're going to be getting the user's account information. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna include from our defines file, the get creds function and the make the PI call function. These two functions were created and we went over them back a few videos back and they come from our defines file. The get creds function basically returns us all the things we need to contact the API, access token IDs, client secrets, page IDs, Instagram account, and the API call basically makes it easy for us to hit um, an endpoint on the API. We just pass in a URL and we pass in some parameters. Now that we have access to those functions, we can define our get account info function. First thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna copy the, the API endpoint uh, format from Facebook Docs so we can see what we're working with. For the API endpoint, we have our base domain, which is the graph.facebook.com. We need to specify the version we're using. Then we need to pass along our Instagram user ID, which is stored in our creds right here. After that, we pass along a bunch of fields, and these are all the fields that we want to get back from the Instagram Graph API for that user. We first have to specify the username for the Instagram account ID. And so for that, I am going to actually add a new parameter to our creds function, and I'm going to call that our IG username. Since I'm doing this on my own account, I'm going to specify my own username. Now when we call this API endpoint, I'm going to be putting my username in here. And then this comma separated string right here is all of the things that we want to get back for the specific user that we're making this call on. I want to get back my username, my website, my name, my IG ID, my Instagram account ID, my profile picture URL, my biography, the follows count, the followers count, and the media count. And like with every API call, we have to pass along an access token, which we also get from our defines file right over here. But now we can set up our endpoint parameters as a dictionary. The first endpoint parameters is the fields. For each of the get variables here in the endpoint structure, we need to pass along um, a dictionary. So we are going to pass along our fields and our first and the fields is business discovery all the way up to the access token. One big string. But inside of this string we need to replace our IG username with the actual variable that we're passing along which is coming from our params. This is going to be IG underscore username. So we specified the username 
the comma separated string, the fields are all set. Next is our access token. This is the same as all the other calls we have been making, is our access token key. Just like that. Those are the only two get parameters, the fields and the access token. Now we can set up our URL. Our URL is going to be everything up until up until the question mark. In our defines file, we have specified this as the endpoint base, which is our domain and the graph version. Endpoint base, except for this is coming in, in the params dictionary. After that, we need to append on the Instagram account ID. Slash Instagram user ID. That is also our variable from our dictionary right here. And it's not called cred, it's called params because it's coming in from the get account info function. Now that we have our endpoint params set up and our URL specified, all we have to do is return our make API call. In here, we pass in the URL that we're hitting. The parameters are passing along to that URL. And then the debug. And debug just means over in our defines file, if we say yes or no, it's going to display out this stuff in the command line, all these print lines. Set our params up right here, and they're going to be equal to our get creds function. Our params are going to call the get creds function in our defines file, and we're going to get this dictionary. Since the debug defaults to no in this dictionary, we're going to override that and say debug equals yes. Then we can make our call. Get account info. And we're going to pass along the params dictionary that we just defined right here. Hopping over to the command line, we're going to run this function. Business discovery. Run it, and it worked. Our debug displayed out the URL we hit, which we set up. We have an extra slash in there, which we don't need. It doesn't matter, it still works. Endpoint parameters, we pass along our access token and all the fields we needed with my username. And then in the response we got back, we got back in the business discovery object all the things that we requested in our fields. Username, website, media account, name, follower account, profile picture URL, IG ID, the ID of our Instagram account, our biography, and the number of people I follow. I'm just going to fix our extra slash here. We don't need that because in the defines file, our endpoint base actually ends in a slash. So we just concatenate endpoint base slash Instagram account ID, and then we get this. Now all we have to do in this file is do some print statements to make it look a little prettier on the command line versus just dumping out the JSON data. Right below our response, we're going to do a bunch of print statements. And that is our print statements. Make it look a little better on the command line. We're gonna, give this a, we're gonna give ourselves a heading of account info, and then we're gonna just display out nicely our username, website, posts, followers, following, profile picture, and our biography. And we're gonna get rid of all the debug information, which is all that JSON, by saying debug equals no. Back in the command line, we're gonna run it again. Business discovery. And now we have a nice pretty command line where we see our account info here, just like we set it up in all the print statements. Now that we have gotten our account information on a user, we're going to move on to getting the user's posts. We're going to copy the first line up here in the business discovery. We're going to copy that to our get user media because we're going to be using the same get creds and the same make API call function. Then I'm going to copy my API endpoint, the structure from Facebook, and let's see what we're working with here. We're creating the same base domain with the Graph API version. We're passing along our Instagram user ID. And to get back to the media for the user, we just do slash media. 
then we can specify the fields that we want to get back for each of the media objects. In this case, we're going to be getting back an ID, a caption, a media type, media URL, the link, thumbnail URL, timestamp, and the username. I'm going to copy my endpoint params right from our business discovery and paste them right here. Since we have the same get parameters, fields and access token, all we have to do is update our fields. And I'm going to copy this string right here. This is where we're getting back our ID, caption, media type, media URL, permalink, thumbnail URL, timestamp, and username for each post. And then of course we have to pass along an access token. Oh, which I failed to copy up here, so I'm going to add that on quick. Alright, so after that we can copy over our URL. And the URL is the same endpoint base plus the Instagram account ID, which is coming from our defines file. And now we have to add on slash media. That's telling the API that we want to get back the media for this Instagram account ID. Then again, we return our make API call with the parameters that we've just defined. Now we're going to make our API call. And define params as get creds. Set debug, this debug right here, to yes. Then we're going to call our get user media function and pass along our params. And since debug is yes, we should be seeing a lot of stuff in the command line. So we run the script to get user media, and our debug has displayed out what we got back. We hit the URL we defined, Instagram ID slash media. We pass the access token and the fields that we wanted to get back for each media type. And then down here in our response data, we got back an array of our media with all of the things that we requested in the fields get parameter. This is page one. If you notice up here in our response, we have a paging object. This object right here tells us if we have a next page or a previous page. In this case, it's the first page, so all we have is the next. If there was a previous page, say we're on the second page, there'd be a previous key here, and the previous key would also have a URL just like the next key. And all you have to do to get the next page is hit this URL right here. It already has the access token get parameter set along with all the fields that we requested. To handle the next page, we're going to add on a parameter to our get user media function. We're going to call it the paging URL. Around our URL variable, we're going to do an if statement. We're going to say if your paging URL is an empty string, then we want to go ahead just like we were before and get the first page. Otherwise, we're going to set the URL equal to our paging URL right here. That way we can now pass in a page if we want to. Otherwise, we'll just get back the first page. In order to get the next page back, we have to call get user media again. Before we call it again, we're going to set the debug again to yes, and we're going to set the debug on the first page to no. This way in the command line, we will only see the results from our second call. Then in the second call, we're going to pass in the response that we got back from the first call. In our second call here, if you go back to the command line, we're going to be calling our second call with paging and the next URL. We're going to pass this URL in to our second call. Now if we run this again, you should see the same thing because debug is true, but only for the second call. Let's scroll up to the top of our call. Now you see the URL we hit is the full URL from the response we got back from the first page. Looking down at the response here in our paging, now, unlike the first page, we have a previous key here. So we have a previous and a next, because now this is the second page of posts. If we call this URL right here, we will get back the first page. Since we're on the second page, we call the next function, we will then get back the third page. And again, we got back an array of data, which contains all the posts on the second page with the fields that we specified in our fields array. So now that we have gotten back the posts and we've seen how to do the paging, we're going to set our debugs to both to no, and we're going to display it out so it looks prettier in the command line. To do that, we need to loop over all of the posts. 
in our function here that we get back, the data key contains the array of posts for the current page that we're on. And here we're just going to do a bunch of print statements. That is the print statements we're going to do for a single post. We're getting rid of all the JSON debugging on the command line, and we're just going to print out our link, the caption, the media type, and when it was posted. For this, I'm just going to do a page so we know what page we're on. That is page one. All we have to do for page two is do the same thing. Update this to page two. And everything else is the same because now our response has been updated to our second get user media call. Now we're going to run our get user media again. Now we see a much cleaner display on the command line. If I scroll back up to the top, here is where we start page one. For each post, we got our link to the post, the caption, the media type, and when it was posted. Scrolling down a bit farther, we should see a page two. There's page two. And the same thing for page two. Each post, we just build the same things. And I'm just going to pick the first one off of page two to verify this is legit. Hop over to the internets, hit that URL, and it is legit. You see here we have my post, the first post on page two. My Friday, can you relate? Bunch of hashtags back in the command line here. That's exactly what you see. My Friday, can you relate? It's an image, and it was posted at that time. And that is how you get to use this media. We can specify the fields we want to get back for each post, and if there's multiple pages, we are able to traverse through each of them, forward or backward. And that is going to wrap up this video. We have written a script to get the user's account information, and we have written a script to get the user's posts. Thank you guys for watching. Hit that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what you want to see coded up next. I'll catch you later.